Hi everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Dhingra, a proud fin trimmer and the faculty for strategic business reporting exam. Welcome, welcome friends, welcome to the fin tram revision boot camp for strategic business reporting exam. We are now getting on to the arena, my friend, to touch upon the questions. But before we really go in there, what is that that we really need to do today is we have to touch upon the current issues should we now jump in and start off with the current issues yes already let's go and jump in moving on to the another current issue that is natural disaster okay now what is that that we need to learn in this we all are exposed to various disasters my friend that are really really being imposed on us by the nature how one would deal with it from the accounting standpoint is something that is being mentioned over here. Let's go and read that. Natural disasters include volcanic disruptions, earthquakes, droughts, tea tsunamis, floods, the hurricanes. Many of these have become more prevalent, most likely as a result of climate change. Natural disaster devastated communities and the process of recovery can last for years we know that companies that operate in areas affected by natural disaster will also have to develop sorry have to consider the financial reporting consequences some of these are considered below now before we really jump in over there one thing that i really want to talk on that is not being mentioned over here is what would happen to a uh, state or a or a city wherein you are facing something like the covid uh, explosion for example if i really take an example of like let's say city like wuhan wherein this covid really picked up and of course it got originated from what would happen to that city or state they would be devastated right of course that is not being considered in the definition the way the, the examiner has defined the natural disaster but would that not also be considered as one of the disaster that has happened to that particular geography? Absolutely. Now, if that is the case, how would the accounting takes a backseat or what would be the changes in the financial reporting is something that you really need to work on. You really need to understand. And that's where this current issue is being discussed. That what is that that you have to have in your mind? when you're thinking of any kind of natural disaster that may come your way in the exam and considering that we all have seen what we have seen in past few months and of course years we know that this can be one of the area where examiner may like to test us on in terms of do we really understand as to how the financial reporting aspect really changes in these kind of scenarios mr mr examiner we are fintrammers and we are fully fully prepared with it Let's go and read that, my friend, and I'm sure that's gonna give you a different perspective. Uh-uh, sorry for interruption, but do you know what is the difference between you and the more aware version of you? Your more aware version would subscribe to our channel Fintram Global and press the bell icon. For keep getting these videos and these updates, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon right now. All right, impairments. A natural disaster is likely to trigger an impairment review absolutely particularly in relation to the property plant and equipment this is because in accordance to is 36 impairment of assets there are likely to be the indicator of the impairment if something like flood happens if something like tsunami happens what would you do you have to think about the impairment you certainly certainly have to think about the impairment all right this may be because individual assets are damaged and it may be because the economic consequences of the disaster triggers a decline in the customer demand i think i think covid would be an example to this the overall overall consequence of tsunami is that demand of various products is then of course the necessities that you may have to acquire has really fallen and has really fallen in a particular geography at large if that is the case that really calls out for the impairment to happen for the industry which has really been exposed out or badly hit by it all right if ppn is destroyed then it should be de-recognized rather than impaired please do not forget that in line with ifrs 9 the financial instruments entities that lend money will need to assess whether the credit risk associated with the financial asset has increased 
significantly. And I can tell you with my personal practical experience of the industry, I know a microfinance company that has been uh, into excessive, uh, I would say, uh, dispersal of the funds uh, to the poor people and of course, you know, to the ones who really need that and of course really want to uh, help them as much as possible. Of course, they charge their own interest. But in the COVID era, if they really do that, do they not have to assess in terms of, you know, how their uh, financial asset would look like considering that people would not be in a shape to pay back. People are not in a shape to really, really uh, be there and stand there for them to be the good debtors. They would not be in that scenario. What you do? What would you do in that case? The natural disaster is likely to lead to a higher default rate, which of course would be the case. So some financial asset will become credit impaired. Is that not right? Yes, sir. Natural disaster may lead to inventory damage if it is the one. Alternatively, the economic consequences of the disaster may mean that inventory must be sold at reduced prices. Is that clear? Yes, sir. As per IS2 inventories, some inventories may need to be remeasured from the cost to its net realizable value. Please note that you have to have this context in your mind, my friend, when you're dealing with these scenarios in the exam, because the more you'll understand that and apply your brain, of course, stick on to the basic conceptual framework, the better you are from the standpoint of handling this exam. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Insurance, very important point. It is likely that the entities affected by the natural disaster will need to account for insurance claims. This can be difficult. This is a difficult area because of the uncertainty regarding the nature of the claim. The type of coverage provided by the insurance and the time and the amount of any proceeds being recoverable. It all depends on the kind of policy that you've taken, the kind of clauses they have, the kind of money that you've really insured on with, and of course, the kind of timing that you may have it over there. All right, IL 37 provisions, contingent liabilities and contingent assets only allows the recognition of the asset from an insurance claim if the receipt is virtually certain. We know that, sir. We have seen that in IS 37. Absolutely, absolutely clear. This is high threshold of a probability. So the recognition is unlikely in these kind of cases. However, if an insurance payout is deemed probable, then contingent asset can be disclosed. Now, if you get a scenario in the exam wherein you are in the dilemma in terms of, you know, do you really recognize the contingent asset or not? You have to follow this. You have to know this more. You would understand this better. You are from the standpoint of handling that in the exam. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Some additional liabilities that you really need to know as a result of natural disaster, an entity may decide to sell or terminate a line of business. Many times this happens and I've seen in this COVID era also, many of the companies have stopped a particular line of business or to save cost by reducing the employee headcount. You must have seen that in various industries that you have really seen across the globe. In accordance with IS 37, a provision will be recognized if there is a present obligation from the past event and an outflow of the economic benefit is probable. We know that, sir. That's the common IS 37, sir. Pretty clear on that. All right. An obligation only exists if the restructuring plan has been implemented or if a detailed plan has been publicly announced. We know that, sir. That's something we've already, already covered. When, the measuring, when measuring the provision, only the direct cost from the restructuring, such as employee redundancy, should be included. We know that, sir. That's done and dusted, sir. All right. Moving on. Provisions may be required if there is an obligation to repair environmental damage. If there is a reason for it, you should accrue that. Moreover, decomm decommissioning provisions when an entity is obliged to decommissioning an asset at the end of its life and restore the land would require a review because the natural disaster may alter the timing and amount of the required cash flows. Very basic, my friend. There is no rocket science in this. You're just touching the basics of the disaster of the issue that disaster is really, really, really bought in. Once you'll understand that, you should know how would that impact the reporting. These important pointers would certainly help you there. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Moving on to the going concern. Now, this can also be concerned, right? That you may get into a situation wherein going concern assumption is a question. What would you do there? What would you do there? Natural disaster will lead to the changes in the economic environment as well as the business interruptions and additional cost. If there are material uncertainties relating to the going concern, then these must be disclosed 
in accordance with the IAS 1. We know that's a presentation of financial statements. If the going concern assumption is not appropriate, then the financial statement must be prepared on the alternate basis and this fact must be disclosed. We know that sir, that's not something new to us. It is pretty, pretty, pretty clear. Now these are, I would say, the examples, my friend, what you may get to see in the form of current issue in the exam. And these all are the guidelines that you may have to follow. Again, you would understand that these are just the basic guidelines, the basic nuances that you may have to follow over there because not anything and everything can have a full-fledged IFRS. You have to know the basics and of course, these current issues examiner can give you in a different way. Applying these logics over there would be certainly helpful. Is that clear? Yes sir. Now that's what I wanted to cover from the natural disaster standpoint. I'll see you in the next current issue. Till then, this is Pankaj Dingra signing off.